the e-scan by automotive test solutions I've got two little case studies that I'm gonna go over um, these are also on my Instagram account I'm just gonna kind of redo them and put them both together in one YouTube video uh, I'm probably gonna start a playlist uh, keep scope stuff separate from uh, scan tool diagnostics um, I am not sponsored by ATS by no means I bought the tool straight up I like to use it uh, this tool definitely helps but everything that can be done with this tool can be done with a conventional scan tool um, it is basically an enhanced OBD2 scan tool it does not do directional controls it has some cool software features that um, I think help out we're gonna get into and go over what all these lines and blocks means um, I'm gonna load a video and we're going to start looking, we're going to start this off first with a 14 Ultima, no DTCs, customer complaint of intermittent no start or hard start or long cranking. 14 Ultima, 2.5, I was asked to drive it, it's been driven a couple of times, could not duplicate, could not duplicate, so uh, I decided to take it for a little spin, uh, took the e-scan with me just uh, maybe get lucky but there you go no DTC's I did a little uh, look at some fuel trims uh, I wasn't too happy with the short and the long idling um, vacuum leak maybe did a look under the hood didn't really see anything so on the e-scan after you open the sharpshooter tab which is here you get this list of things here um, fuel trim basically you have your throttle position over your RPM so I basically just took this thing for a little spin um, you know giving it some throttle up to about 60 percent you can see I never went over really 3,000 3,500 uh, this is all I needed to see at this point I've ruled out a vacuum leak uh, vacuum leaks generally rear their head at idle usually off idle they'll get better but I'm asking myself do I have a uh, do I have a fuel issue or an air issue and by air do I mean do I have a dirty mass airflow or an airflow meter that is under reporting um, at this point I don't know but I do know she's lean pretty much from idle all the way up and I'm sure if I would have kept going it would have uh, been lean up in here so with the e-scan you know you start with your DTC's you can look at PID data uh, either in digital or graph the mode 6 works really good uh, eventually I'll do more videos with some of these others but right now I want to concentrate on fuel trim volumetric efficiency and then there's a cool chart that really 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 uh, paints the picture as to which direction air or fuel so right now we're dealing with a lean vehicle and I use my butt meter uh, the car didn't run too bad um, like I said you could do this with a conventional scan tool it, it just this thing with the with the blocks and the colors really 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 just makes problems stand out so I'm gonna move over the next uh, slide I'm gonna use uh, do is a volumetric efficiency test and uh, I'm gonna load that right. now so the next tab over is volumetric efficiency and um, which you, you basically put in a little bit of basic information engine size temperature your elevation uh, you take this thing out for a little spin now this these Nissans have CVTs in them. Uh, usually you would run it through first gear, maybe second. Uh, with CVT trans, you really don't have that option. So basically just kind of take it out, uh, you know, hold it to the floor, let it pick up some speed, let the, let the engine really wind itself up. And what we're doing is we're checking theoretical airflow versus actual and the, the nice thing with the e-scan is they have a lot of models built into the tool uh, this red trace that you see here would be a theoretical model and the yellow is the actual car and you can see it's laying on it really good so what that really is telling me that mechanically the engine can move air um, timing is good valves pistons everything seems to be able to to push air in and out the exhaust is not stopped up and it's also letting me know that the uh, airflow meter is reading correctly uh, good information 
now I'm leaning more towards a fuel delivery issue because my air is starting to look good. And before I got this tool, I used to have a, well, I still have an app on my phone where I would just, you know, set in the, the engine size. And then I would go use a conventional scan tool and look at RPM uh, grams per second. And then do a little bit of math and then figure out my VE from there. Uh, this thing actually does it for you. And just from driving these cars for years and years and years, it's pretty good. Uh, over 130, between 130 and 140 with this engine is uh, pretty spot on. I do find some discrepancies in the engines and in the second case study, you'll be able to see that. So the next tab that I'm gonna push is gonna be VE total fuel trim comparison. Basically, it's gonna look at this and the first test we did and put a nice little graph and it really just puts the nail in the coffin as to which direction to go. So as of it, this right now, I believe my air is good and I'm leaning towards a fuel problem. Uh, you really don't have to drive it for the third test. You just click this tab here and it loads the first two tests and then you can compare it kind of live or side by side. And uh, I'm gonna put that video up next and we'll go over that. So after you push this tab here, you're going to hit load file and it's going to take the first test drive and the second test drive and put them together. And the yellow trace here is the fuel trim. You can see as we're gaining RPM, uh, we have to keep adding and adding more fuel. All the while, our air is still spot on. So if you don't see a, a graph, that means it was perfect. It was perfect in line with our theoretical model. You can see it deviated less than 5%. Uh, at one point but it had this guy is just still going lean 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 so this kind of tells me that our air is perfect we need to start looking for a fuel problem uh, this car ended up needing a fuel pump I'm gonna put a quick little video uh, the fuel pressure never got over 30 the spec is 51 um, honestly the car ran good uh, I couldn't believe it was running as good as it did on 30 pounds but up until this point, we hadn't really got our hands dirty. Uh, no need to get fuel spraying everywhere and, and, you know, getting all the fuel pressure tools out until you absolutely have to. Uh, after I've seen all this data here, it, it was necessary to do. It actually has taken me longer to go through this than it actually did to diagnose the car. So after the little video of the fuel issue, I'm going to move into a Nissan Frontier uh, with uh, a similar problem but different result. So hang on. Uh huh. Caught ya. Supposed to be at fifty one, ain't ya? Okay. All right, this is a 16 Nissan Frontier 4.0 liter V6. You, you saw the, uh, the screenshot. It was a multi-cylinder misfire and lean bank two were the two DTCs. So just like before with the Altima, I went to, I went to the fuel trim tab and took it for a little spin. Uh, although it did say lean bank two, which is really, really lean. This dude was lean off of idle all the way through the middle. And then probably up in here during enrichment, it kind of picked itself up. But bank one is lean also. Uh, never really felt the misfires, but I have, have a feeling it had something to do with this kind of a mess over here. So I asked myself again, is it fuel or is it air? Um, we know it's lean on both banks through pretty much the entire RPM span. So I'm going to move through this one a little quicker. So this is what I'm dealing with so just like before, at this point. I hit the VE tab. I filled in some basic information over here. Um, this has a regular transmission in it. So I uh, was able to hold it to the wood through first gear, maybe into second. You can see where it's shifted here. Uh, I do believe that the theoretical in the, in the machine itself is a little overdone. It's showing maximum between 200 and 220 grams per second. Uh, from my experience, this old 4 liter in these trucks and uh, Pathfinders in these years were a little lazy. So to me, 
anything between 180 and 200 is good. I've just done this so many times, that's generally what I see. But it's still good to do the test. You can see it laid on it really good. Um, I've had a little discrepancy right at the shift, and then it pulled back up. And uh, this doesn't, uh, this does not raise any red flags with me because I've drunk, I've driven so many of these vehicles. Um, if I were really concerned about this, I would probably do it again, uh, and and just to be sure. Now, if this thing was down in here. And the theoretical was up here. Sure, I would be uh, a little more worried about that. But the truck still, it, it, it ran good. You, you got to take that in consideration also. You know, look at the graph, look at the numbers, but also your, your feeling. How did it actually pull? I tell guys all the time, what did what'd your butt tell you? Did it, did it really accelerate? Was it stumbling and bumbling? Um, did it lay over at high RPM? Or did it feel good and solid all the way through? Was there any detonation? You know, kind of use all of your senses and the data to help make decisions um, this truck pulled hard it, it felt like every other little four-wheel drive nissan truck uh, this like i said it's it's a little off but it's not off enough for me to uh, use it as a point of concern uh, plus we're going to do one more test the ve compare chart and like I said, that, that little chart right there really sells me on which way to go. So we know we're lean. We know we're lean on both banks. And at this point, I'm feeling like my air is good. The engine doesn't have a problem moving air. Uh, I don't think my mass airflow is underreporting. And the truck overall really actually runs pretty good. So uh, the next slide, I'm going to hit this. And, All right, uh, so what I've done is we'll I've hit that. the VE TFT compare. I hit load file. And this is what I get. Uh, total fuel trim bank two is the green. Remember, it was coating bank two. That's really lean. The yellow is bank one. We can see it was, you know, it's lean, but it hasn't coated it. And this is our air. Uh, this is the discrepancy between the yellow and the red that was on the VE chart. Um, so how do I tell if it's air or fuel? Okay, so let's say, um, let's say for instance that my mass airflow was under reporting, meaning the engine was getting more air than it was being told. And this discrepancy was here. If I was getting more air than what was being reported, then my fuel trims would be going lean. It would be compensating for the extra air. But you could see during my discrepancy, I'm actually getting better. So that's telling me, uh, this, this is kind of the money shot. This is telling me that it is not a mass airflow problem. This is a fuel delivery issue. Uh, bank two is obviously, you know, buku lean. It's going all the way up to 30%. Uh, it just hasn't coded this one yet. Uh, the last video I'm going to put up is, is the fuel. The fuel was contaminated on this vehicle. I don't know what it was contaminated with, but the more I drove it, and it sloshed around and shook the tank up, the worse this truck actually ran. Uh, if you brake checked it a bunch and really got the fuel slosh and, and then it started picking up whatever the stuff was in the tank, it started misfiring and, and uh, running pretty poorly. But uh, this graph right here, along with the other tests, you know, we knew we were lean. We felt confident that our air was good. And then this graph right here really tells me that the air is fine. Uh, and that I should be looking for a fuel delivery issue. Uh, just by the way, the truck ran. Uh, it actually ran good, just like the Altima. Uh, with the nastiness in the tank, uh, it actually ran pretty good uh, uh, until I sloshed the fuel around. But I'll put a quick little video up of a fuel sample. We flushed the tank and uh, shipped this dude down the road, and he was fine. Uh, hope you guys like this video. This is kind of a little two-part deal. I just put it together as one. Uh, can't do all scope all the time, so there is some scan to scan tool diagnostics out there. Uh, the e scan is a good tool, uh, not a necessity, but uh, I like it. Um, really good tool. It's got a lot of other cool things goes on in here, uh, which I'll try to put up at, at a later date and kind of keep this playlist as scan tool diagnostics. So uh, thanks for tuning in and watching subscribing, liking, all that good stuff. 
and uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. Nice looking fuel. Nice looking fuel.